Welcome to another episode of the Locked On Red Sox podcast. There's a ton to get to today. A lot have, of free agents have signed, but the Red Sox have remained a little bit quiet. I'm also going to discuss a wonderful story regarding Tanner Houck and the NFT community. There's so much to get to. I'm excited. Let's get to it. Locked On Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, hello. I'm your host, Nessens Lauren Campbell. Thank you so much for making Locked On Red Sox your first listen of every single day, especially on this Giving Tuesday but the Red Sox haven't been so giving to their fans this year or this offseason, really, because they have yet to really make a big agent, big free agent signing. They did agree to a deal with Michael Waka, and it's a little underwhelming, I think, because he's not a Max Scherzer. He's not a Robbie Ray. He's not a big name pitcher. But Monday was a very, very busy day in the free agent market. You had several people agree to contracts. You had Max Scherzer go to the Mets, Corey Seager to the Rangers, Robbie Ray to the managers, Alex, uh, the managers, the, the Seattle Mariners, Alex Cobb went to the Giants, Daniel Hudson went to the Dodgers. And that's just naming a few. That is just a few names that were off the board or came off the board yesterday. And the, like I said, the Red Sox only agreed to terms with Michael Waka. And also they agreed to terms with former Tigers first round draft pick Kristen Stewart on Tuesday. They agreed to a minor league deal with him that involves a big league spring training tryout. So he will be with the Red Sox when spring training begins, hopefully in February. We're obviously not sure. The lockout is set to happen in less than 30 hours from now. So obviously it's been a little slow for the Red Sox this offseason. I really thought they'd be more active after the signing of Waka. I thought they'd be more active Monday when everyone seemed to be making moves and they just didn't. They they're standing pat. They're slow to make any moves and it's beginning to be I won't say I'm super concerned, but it definitely is a little frustrating because you want to see this team do or build to be a better team. They were so competitive last year when they weren't supposed to be. You've lost Erod. You need to replace him. You need to bolster your your pitching. And you haven't really done anything. Now, there is one potential reason that could be uh, why they're handling the offseason so slow at first. And Tuesday, tonight, at 8 p.m. Eastern time, that is the non-tender deadline and the Red Sox have nine arbitration eligible players and they range from Raphael Devers, Hunter Renfro, Nick Pavetta, Alex Verdugo, Kevin Ploiecki, Ryan Brazier, Christian Arroyo, Josh Taylor, and Tim LaCastro. So that's, you know, that's a lot of players that are arbitration eligible that they do need to take care of. I don't think there's going to be any surprise cuts. I don't think there's going to be any surprises when it comes to tendering contracts to these players. So any arbitration eligible player who is tendered a contract, they remain under the team control, but a salary still needs to be negotiated between the team and the player. It's probably safe to say the Red Sox will try to hammer out the details and the deals for the nine players that I mentioned, which means even though it's reaching 5 p.m. on a Tuesday, we're close to this deadline Some agreements could be reached before this 8 p.m. deadline. Now, like I said, I don't really see any surprise cuts being made. I think that every player will be tendered a contract. MLB trade rumors, they they predicted the salaries of some of these players. Raphael Devers was 11.1 million. Hunter Renfro was 7.6. Nick Pavetta and Alex Verdugo both were 3.2 million. And I think that this is all reasonable salaries for these players. There, I mean, Raphael Devers, there's been tons of people wanting a contract extension for the third baseman. According to reports out there, there have been no talks of extending Devers beyond this season. That doesn't mean a contract won't come. It doesn't mean that they have no plans for Devers in their future. It probably just means they want to get this arbitration out of the way and make sure that that Devers does not bring the Red Sox to arbitration 
And then they can sit down and they can decide maybe what his future is with the Red Sox. Maybe they don't see him at third base. Maybe they see him more in a designated hitter role. Maybe they want to see what he can give the Red Sox in 2022 and give him another opportunity, maybe one more season or a couple, you know, half the season, a quarter of the season to show that he's worked out of these mental errors and easy errors that he makes several times throughout a season. You know, he did lead the Red Sox in errors and an all-star first baseman. You just can't have that. Obviously, I know errors are going to happen. It's part of the game. No one's perfect, but Devers has been in the league too long now, even though he's still very young. He's been in the league too long to be making these kinds of errors that he makes every season. Now, for every amazing play he makes, he makes an easy error, an error that should have been an out. Sometimes they don't cost the Red Sox anything. Sometimes they cost them a run or two. And it's just, you go back and you wonder how many games could have the Red Sox won, or maybe a game got out of control because of an error by Devers. But I don't think the Red Sox and Devers not having conversations right now is anything to raise a red flag for. I think at the end of the day, like I said, they just want to get this one part of his contract out of his ways, um, eligible for arbitration, and they want to get that settled, before, especially before the this pending lockout is supposed to happen. Now, I also mentioned that the Red Sox agreed to terms on a minor league deal with Kristen Stewart, and he's certainly, you know, no big name player, not something that will probably get Red Sox fans talking, and that's probably as part to do with his best professional season came in 2016, so going to be six seasons ago now. He did hit 30 home runs. But since then, this power hitter really has not been a power hitter. He's struggled, and he's really a big problem here is his strikeouts. In 89 games with AAA in 2021, he had 100 strikeouts and 343 plate appearances. And even though he managed 21 home runs, that's still a lot of strikeouts. It's almost like I always go back to Willie Mopena. Either that guy was hitting a bomb or he was striking out. There was really no in-between with him. And it was really frustrating to watch at times because you know when he connects, that ball is out is out of Fenway Park. That ball is out of wherever he's playing. But he struck out more times than he would homer. And you're just like, this is ridiculous. Like he becomes a liability at the plate. But he is only 27. He spent parts of three major league seasons with the Tigers. Between 2018 and 2020, he's played in 157 MLB games. So if anything, this is a depth move. I don't think it's anything, like I said, it's not going to get Red Sox fans talking. It's probably not going to get Red Sox fans super excited because they are expecting a lot this offseason. And rightfully so. There needs to be changes made, and the Red Sox are taking their time. Again, this is probably methodical. They do have the arbitration deadline, but... Could they be working for a trade somewhere, somewhere around the league? I don't know. But I do know that Red Sox fans will not be happy if something does not get done before December 1st at 11.59 p.m. when the CBA expires and the league is expected to lock its players out. Coming up in our second segment of Locked On Red Sox, I'm going to share a wonderful story about Tanner Houck and the opportunity I had to talk to him. It was a great, fulfilling story about him and his adoptive sister, Rihanna. I cannot wait to share that with you in our second segment, so be sure to stick around for that. But first, I need to tell you about Bet Online because Bet Online has you covered all season, which means more props, odds, and lines than ever before as football season continues the march to the playoffs. I can't believe we're almost, we're, I can't believe we're already talking about NFL playoffs. This season has flown by so far, but Bet Online remains your number one spot for all of the sports action this season. Head to the new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code Locked On to receive that 50% bonus. From basketball, football, NHL, boxing, and UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports, and I can confirm that they make it super easy, especially for the first-time bettors. Bet online, it's where the game starts. This episode also is brought to you by Direct TV Stream. Does this sound familiar? You've got one device that lets you catch the game live, another that lets you stream your favorite shows, you're watching sports highlights on your phone, and you've got your neighbor's best friend's login for the good stuff. I think I just got called out. I want to tell you about a simple way to get all that entertainment you love without the hassle and a great way to finally get your TV together. 
It's called Direct TV Stream, and it brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before. That means you can catch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes, no need to buy a device ever again, and here's the best part. There is no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter, get rid of the confusion, and get your TV together with Direct TV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required and content varies by package. Welcome back to the Locked On Red Sox podcast. Thank you so much for making Locked On Red Sox your first listen of every single day. So I had the opportunity to talk to Tanner Haug on Monday about his NFT project that he is collaborating with his sister Rihanna on. And it's uh, so NFT is this big craze now. A lot of athletes are getting involved and Tom Brady's part of it. I believe Julian Edelman is part of it too. And Tanner Haug decided to jump in on this big craze and this opportunity here to continue to raise awareness for adoption. Now, if you don't know, Tanner Houck's family is very closely connected to adoption. They adopted, the Houck's adopted Rihanna when she was four years old. And Tanner Houck had said that it really, that was the moment that he really saw that he grew up so well. He had it so good growing up. And he then realized that his family is giving this little girl an opportunity, a, a new life, a fresh start. And he has just been so inspired by her and her willingness to just adapt and to continue to live a great life. His father and his stepfather also are adopted. And Tanner Houck has the Pitch for Adoption charity that he donates money to every time he earns a strikeout. And he just wants people to know the benefits of adoption. So him and his sister, Rihanna, created this NFT for Giving Tuesday. If you buy three or more of them, you have the option to get a piece of Rihanna's original artwork signed by both Rihanna and Tanner. Um, Rihanna is an aspiring illustrator. She created all of the artwork for these NFTs. All the proceeds that they get from these NFTs are going to go to adoption charities. There's one right here in Boston. There's others in Tanner's home state of Illinois. So this was something that was so fun to write. I wrote an article on it today. It's on Nesson.com if you want to read it. But it was just so amazing to hear how much Rihanna has inspired Tanner, not just in this NFT collection and this project that they were able to collaborate on, but throughout his entire life. He told me that Rihanna really completed their family and she was kind of like that stamp of completion for the Hawks and that he's been inspired by her his, her his whole life. She's really inspired the benefits and trying to raise awareness and raise funds for adoption charities. She's been the inspiration behind all of this. And she's only 14 and she's already doing so much for adoption awareness. She's probably going to do a lot more as she gets older as well. But to see Tanner and the house as a whole use their platform in order to raise awareness and be able to jump on a craze that people really like right now and use it for the greater good, give back to both of his communities in Boston and Illinois, and just give back to adoption as a whole, a cause that's really impacted his life in such a positive way, is so awesome to see. And it was great to have him open up about the NFT community and how excited he is that he was able to collaborate with this company called Etched, who is a four charity NFT. I believe they were the first char like four charity NFT. He's been promoting uh, the NFT since, since I saw yesterday throughout social media. Uh, like I said, he's been so open about adoption and how much he truly just has been impacted by it in such a positive way. And it's Giving Tuesday. It's, you know, we're almost in December. It's just after Thanksgiving now. There's still so much to be thankful and grateful for. And one thing Tanner really emphasized was that he wants this, you know, all this awareness and people to continue to, you know, give thanks and give to charities, not just during the holidays, but during, you know, a random Monday, a random Friday, and just to continue to bring awareness and raise these funds for something that's so special to him. So I really am happy that I got to share that with you. Like I said, the article is right on Nesson.com if you want to read it. It was a great conversation. And I'm so grateful that I had the opportunity to tell this story. Coming up in our third and final segment of Lockdown Red Sox, I will, as I always do, end this show on a positive note. Welcome back to the third and final segment of Locked on Red Sox. Thank you so much for making Locked on Red Sox your first listen of every single day. And my positive takeaway, I know it's been slow for the Red Sox. It's been kind of a frustrating offseason so far, 
especially with the lockout right around the corner. But I think something positive to take away from this is that I don't think they're going to make any surprise moves here with this tender deadline. I don't think they're going to be cutting Christian Arroyo, Kevin Ploiecki, Rafael Devers. I think everybody will get a contract. So that is, you know, that's something positive. We have to look at things in a positive light right now. And I'm hoping and I'm manifesting that them being so quiet during this offseason so far is going to mean that they are working on a trade of, to bring somebody that will actually help this team and fill the void of Erod or bolster the bullpen. So I'm going to manifest that. And that's where I'm going to end this show. Thank you so much for tuning in to Tuesday's episode of Locked on Red Sox. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at la 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 Lauren, three laws, Lauren with four R's, and the Locked On Red Sox Twitter account at LO underscore Red Sox. Don't forget to check out all the other Locked On shows across our network Locked On A's, Locked On Blue Jays, Locked On Yankees. Everyone does an incredible job here. Please rate, review, and subscribe to the Locked On Red Sox podcast wherever you get your podcast right here on YouTube. Let me know what I can do more of, less of, better. I am not here without you, so I want to hear from you. Thank you once again for making Locked On Red Sox your first listen of today. Now head on over to Locked On Bets and make that your second listen of the day. Locked On Bets is your daily one-stop shop for all of your gambling needs. It's hosted by your boy Q with expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling. It's free and available on all platforms. Have a great rest of your Tuesday. I will see you Wednesday.